Hello guys, this is Fusion Forge, and this is going to be video number 5 of the Onshape Tutorials. In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to make a bike handlebar. So without further ado, let's get started. Now because our previous model was the hex nut, just go into your workspace units and make sure that it is length default unit is set for inches. And then, assuming that now it is, click on the right plane and start a sketch. Use Shift 4 to go straight to the right plane. And now we want to draw four circles. First one should have a diameter of 1. Second one is going to have a diameter of 1.16. And it's going to be 1.4. Finally, it's going to be 1.5. And now we want to extrude. We don't want to extrude the largest circle here. Instead, we actually want to extrude the smallest one. Click Shift 7 to go into an isometric view. And then click the opposite direction because we want it to go that way. For the depth, it should be 3.9 inches, and then confirm it. Now show the sketch again, and then click Shift E to extrude. Extrude this large, this second largest circle, and we want to extrude this one by 0 0.2 inches. Make sure that the direction it's going is opposite the initial extrusion. And then we want to extrude the last and largest circle by 0 0.5 inches and finish your sketch. Now that you're at this point, you should see two parts, one being the first extrusion and the second one being the other two extrusions. If you don't see two parts, please go to extrusion 2 and make sure that it is set to new instead of add. And after that, zoom out. Make sure that you're clicking on the front plane and start a sketch. Use Shift 1 to, and then get as close as you can to the rightmost corner of this model between the second extrusion and the first extrusion. Use G to make a corner rectangle. And this rectangle should have a diameter or a width of 0 0.022 inches and a length of 0 0.1 inches. And now we want to draw a construction line using L then Q that is vertically constrained to the circle in the first sketch and then horizontally constrained so that it is perfectly flat. Now this rectangle should be 0 0.055 inches away and then just drag it to that you can, however, change, not use the construction line at all, and then just drag this rectangle to however you want. 0 0.0. I will be using this as an example, and then we want it to be 0 0.14 inches away from the right side of the model. And now we want to change this top line to construction mode and then press A for an arc. We want to connect both of these points in an arc and then just drag upwards till it snaps like that. Your radius should be 0 0.011 inches. Now use the linear pattern feature to pattern this rectangle that we've created and then drag, click and drag this arrow the other way. For the number of objects, we want it to be 64, and each of these objects should be 0.054 inches apart. Because of the glitch that I have mentioned before, it doesn't really matter which direction they're going, and then we just click confirm. We just want to fix the sketch, we just want to add a negative mark to it to make it go the right direction. Now, we want to click Shift W to enable the revolve feature. And for the revolve axis, we want to click on this circle right here, the second circle that we created. Instead of for the revolve type, instead of full, we want it to be one direction, and we want this direction, and then we want the angle to be 233 degrees. Your, revo uh, your revolution should not be this direction. It should not be counterclockwise. 
If it is, then click on the opposite direction to make sure that it is clockwise, and then just confirm the sketch. Now that we're here, we want to click Shift 7 again, and we're done with these planes, so we can just use P to hide all of them. And then we want to sh use Shift 3 to get to the left view. And then we want to click this face right here and start a sketch on it using Shift S. Press C for circle and then drag outwards. This circle should have a diameter of 1.28 inches. And then we need to extrude the sketch by 0.6 inches. Now, to get a better look, you can either use Orbit or you can use Shift 7. For the case of this, I will be using Orbit. Switch to Merge with All and make sure that it's symmetric. Now, make sure that it has a second end position. That second end position should be 0 0.15 inches. And then, assuming that your extrusion is Go, your large extrusion is going away from the model and your smaller extrusion is going towards the model. Finish this and then click on Shift 7 to go back to isometric. We want to make all of those planes appear again and then we want to make another sketch on the front plane. Click L for line. Make sure that you're clicking on the origin and then just drag it outwards. Make sure that it has the horizontal constraint to apply to it and then it doesn't matter what length it is. Just make sure and then just finish your sketch. Now, we're going to make a line angle plane. So click on plane, change plane type to line angle, and then that line that we just made, click on that. For the angle, it should be 50 degrees. This angle should be facing the bald spot of our, of our previous revolution. If it is, then just press the check mark. Now, click on this plane and then click Shift S to start a sketch on it. Now what you want to do is switch to view, click on View Normal 2, right click on the plane and then click View Normal 2. If you click it twice it will take you to the other side as you can see here. And we can actually hide all of the planes now that we are on this. Now we're going to use the text feature. We are just going to make a text box. So for the purpose of this, I will be naming myself Fusion Forge Mountaineers, but you can put whatever you want on this. And then just click Confirm. Now we're going to get these, this text. Click on D for dimensioning. This is the right side of the rectangle, and we just want this to be 0 0.3 inches. And then, now that it is at a size where it can fit, we get to drag this so that it is perfectly centered on our handlebar. Now that we have this, just click Shift E to extrude it. We are going to want a second end position on this. And the end type for both of these extrusions are going to be up to face. The first one is going to be up to this face right here of the inner handle bar. And the second one is going to be up to the face of the inner side of the cylinder right here. Now you might see this error that might just happen because of some performance issues. Now what should happen is that you should see these letters outside extruded onto your handlebar, but not inside. If it isn't going inside, make sure to switch to the opposite direction so that both of these are going in the same direction. For merge scope, you can leave it. You don't want it to merge with anything, actually. And press Shift 7, so now you're going to see this. And instead of Add, it should be set to New. And then just press the check mark. Now, let's color it. Let's color it. So, and we're going to actually color it using the composite part feature. So for the composite part feature, let's color this handlebar first. So just click on it, 
it's part one, so we actually don't need to make a part for it, but for the sake of demonstration, I will. We make another part for all these letters, which we can actually find really easily if we just click on the first one, which is in my case is going to be the F. That's part three. So then all of these parts up to 27 are all letters. So if I just hold down shift and click, it will select, it should select all of these parts. I don't know why it isn't. It's probably because my computer is slow. So now that it is, it has all of these parts selected, we're just going to click the check mark and we're actually going to hide this. Now we have the handle and then the letters. For the letters, I am going to use the mixer for the in the appearance tab and I'm going to change change the hexadecimal to F F 0, 0, 0, 0. That is going to turn them all to bright red. On the other hand, if I wanted to make it another another color, I could go to edit appearance, go to mixer, and then I can drag this to whatever I would like, and then just drag this point to whatever I would like. Alternatively, I could edit the at the hexadecimal number or put in the RGB light RGB values by hand. In this case, because I want it to be completely bright red, I would change it to RGB R25, G0, and B0. And now for the handle, we can also use the palette. Now for the handle, I'm thinking the fourth bottom from the left would be a good look. And finally, we have this right here this little part right here. So we can actually go and just go into parts, go to that part, and then click edit appearance here. And then we can change this appearance to whatever we want. Now for the sake of this, I, you can change the hexadecimal in the palette. You don't have to go to the mixer as I did with the, uh, hem with the letters. And for the side of the handler, I'm going to want it to be 0908 capital F, eight, capital F, which is going to give it that dark gray feature. Now we can hide the sketch and there we go. That is making a handlebar in OnShape. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a good day.